And now we can begin. Welcome to another episode of the American Beer Review Podcast. Good times with good friends requires good beer. Lucky for us, we know how to pick all three. We're a group of friends who grew up in the Pacific Northwest, giving us a jump start on our craft beer journey. Join us today while Brian, Alec, and Chad review some beer, talk about beer topics, and whatever else comes up. We invite you to pour yourself a drink and hang out with us. All right, so beer-related, not funny story, but thought. (laughs) Um, So I think 12 hours after the last time we wrapped, I was on a flight to California, right? So spent a week in San Francisco. Um, Way cleaner than I thought it was going to be. I mean, there was homeless everywhere, but they didn't live there. Mm. Like none of the tents or shopping no tent, carts no tent city on the way in and i'm sure they're way on the way in and out when i was in uh union square so like okay. a very touristy spot and they pressure wash the sidewalks every night so oh. <clears throat> homeless everywhere but not like i said living there it felt yes. clean yeah uh but thought while i was down there so best part about being in the city not really my scene uh cities in general not necessarily san francisco but i was 10 minutes from work like from my hotel room oh. to where I was working, it was a 10-minute walk. It's dope. Ooh, it's awesome. I know. That, that allure right? it was, really smacks so every once in a while. that was awesome. Uh, I mean, I saw my hotel room, the store I was at, and that was about it. But they've decriminalized most hard drugs yeah. in San Francisco. I think Seattle, and I know Portland Oregon. has. Oregon, like, as a state has right. done it. Yeah, at a state yeah. level, yeah. So... Consistently, on my way to or from work, there are people smoking whatever out of tinfoil, crack, fentanyl, heroin, whatever they're doing. Uh, they've decriminalized it. Why can't I buy a beer at the convenience store and drink that on my walk? Oh, home? yeah. Why, why, why is it allowed to... I mean, are you going to get stopped? Wait. All right. So maybe it's because I have a family and a house and whatever <laughs> you don't responsibilities that I don't want to And you're on a it. business trip with your boss. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. But, but no, that isn't, that's an interesting thought. You can do whatever you want on the streets, but I guarantee that if I crack the tall boy on my walk to my hotel room where I would still be then legally uh, okay to drive, that's, that's yeah. out, off, off the table. Not. Yeah, it's probably not... Um... Well, I don't know. Are more places going to get into that of doing it, like where it becomes um, kind of like like what are the places that you can do? Obviously, Vegas. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows Vegas. Um, and then you have. I feel like there was somewhere random, like a Kansas City or somewhere, where there's like a uh, a downtown, like the Nashville? Pow- like the. And then I Broad- think. Can you on Broadway? I don't know if you can uh, on Broadway. I could not last time I was there. Okay, and then I think uh, French Quarter. French Quarter. Yeah. There is also like um, one of the places in like South Carolina. Like, what's the, one of the like? I think we looked at it. Right, we're like, yes, we should go to this random, place. Yeah. Like, let's go hang out here. <clears throat> it still nail me if I'm drunk and disorderly or public intoxication. Yeah, if you're being but, jack- yeah, if you're being a jackass about it, yeah. But if I'm cracking my first beer after work, walking home, no harm, no foul, uh, right? Yeah, I mean. I think the other, I think the gate, up here, I feel like the gateway to be or other places are more nationally accepted. What if it's a, you know, cities put in a effort to go, okay, we're going to make our restaurant row Mm -hmm. and this zone, you can open carry, but that open carry cannot leave the building. Like a stadium. We're talking about stadium rules. Alcohol, right? Open carry. (laughs) Well, here you go. Yeah, no. you. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know what? I don't think certain parts of the state. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, no, like uh, like going to a uh, Seahawks game. Yeah. The area inside the stadium, mm-hmm. you can buy a beer. It is open for you, but you can take that right. beer anywhere and consume it anywhere. What? That would be like. I, it's not like I don't have things against bars, but now the allure of going to. Bo- to a dark, danky bar and having a beer is, like, not as appealable. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, you know, <clears throat> last few years. But more of if I could go somewhere, grab a beer, walk around, be outside, people watch. Uh, 
go to a restaurant. Vancouver yeah. did this, and I don't know if it's Vancouver, British Columbia. Yeah, yeah. That they did it uh, during the pandemic, and I don't know how much it carried over, like whether it's still a thing, but basically like made the parks like um, like open container places where you can just mm. go like. Mm. And anywhere in these little zones, you can kind of hang out and have your drinks. And I think that's the thing, the key, like, would be the difference. That it needs to be related to something, not just, like... uh, Wherever you want. Yeah. Like, and that's the theory. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. If people want to walk down the street, you know, in a tucked away neighborhood with a drink in their hand... Nobody's going to say anything. No. No. And we all have, like, reusable containers or things Mm -hmm. to put them in. But I think the key is, like, there needs to be. And that's why it makes me think of, like, Kansas City, because they have, like, the um, power and light district or something like that, where it's, like, a bunch of established places, like you're yeah. saying, of, hey, here's the the restaurant area, the drinking area, and it's, right. like, you're all in this, like, kind of contained spot. The problem with doing that is, like, you then have to police that area then and mm-hmm. the perimeter to make sure. Whereas if it's just not allowed anywhere, it's not as much of like having to have this contained. Well, and to your point space. earlier is nobody probably would have stopped me. No. In the first place. No. So I guess being a law abiding citizen. Was Has the, its was drawbacks. The restraint. <laughs> <laughs> well, if everybody who had a beer in their fridge went outside, cracked a beer, they couldn't all stop us. I think I think that's the I think that's the other thing. Is this there a new flash be, mob? <laughs> there, there are probably in America, percentage wise, so many more user, drinkers of beer than there are users of uh, uh, other percentage wise for sure. Yeah. Although it's been declining, I think it was one of the articles somebody posted or I was looking up for today was that uh, beer consumption has actually gone down in uh, the last. It, Few years. I think it was related to the seltzer one yeah, we'll bring up related a little bit to, later. Yeah. People were buying other hooches and whatnot. No, the- it's total alcohol consumption's going down. In Japan, oh. <clears throat> I believe I could be making all of this up. Uh, <laughs> had a campaign to encourage young people to go out and like go s- go to bars and drink. And it was a, like yeah. a business. Like, well yep, at, two at, pronged. It was business, you're driving the tax revenue right. uh, from all the sales and Hey man, if you, all of you guys just go home and sit in your uh, apartments, population's going down. You're not spending any yeah. money. You're like go socialize, meet other people, go sp- spend money, do uh, things. Go, go go get drunk, do irresponsible things, and make babies. But that <laughs> in, <laughs> see, but that doesn't work. The logic doesn't because uh, they're talking about a COVID baby boom right now, where people were not out and about. And now yeah, you're those, seeing birth rates spiking. Those are the people that are already yeah together. Right, yeah, you got to already have they, that. They have a problem, like, there's a just a huge chunk of guys in their 18 to 35 range. They're going, I'm never getting married. They, they like, they never leave their room. They sit there and play video games. It's right. like a serious, that's, that was kind of in line. Mm-hmm. They were doing some other incentivizing things along that line of going out, go get drunk. Because young people who go out and get drunk, they're going to make babies. Right. But then uh, last week it dropped that Japan they finally reached um, the record for now. Uh, six, their population sixty five and up is now twenty uh, percent of the population. Mm. Mm. So kind of in that line. So watch for more. Yeah, we, uh, we need- go get. Please go drink beer. Go sing karaoke. Like, go have fun. Maybe this breaks down the strict work at your desk 12 hours a day kind of mentality. Yeah. What, what's the term for it? I forgot. Um, well, but even over, over the last like bit, I started a new job and half the office isn't there because they found out over the last two years. Like You don't have to be. These people literally do not need to be in the office. Yeah. Like there's no need for them to be here because yeah. they're just not, they're not meeting with their coworkers. Mm-hmm. If they do, it's rare or, you know, a few times a week. And they're not customer facing, right? So there's no need for them to even be in the building, right? So, but middle managers need a job. <laughs> that, that's the problem. That's it. the The management of people uh, 
even a, you know from home how many groups could you manage versus having to herd cats in person? I mean, it's just, it, you're going to see it everywhere. You're either going to see uh, people have more freedom to work from home, have more time to go out, drink beer, go out to restaurants, go socialize. So maybe, you know, maybe two, three years, because everything's kind of lagging. Right. Uh, maybe we do start seeing certain places go, hey, uh we're going to take our stadium district idea, apply it to this section of the city, come in and attract uh, all the, because there were a ton of restaurants that have closed in the last two years. Mm -hmm. It'd be a great boon. Hey, we're going to make this area where we're going to have people, they can get a beer, walk anywhere around here and go have a meal. Yeah. Or bar hop or restaurant hop, bistro hop. I, I think, and then, you, you know, you sneak in a little craft brewery and one or two ends mm -hmm. and boom, you could have another new kind of craft uh, boom. Because obviously with the rise of seltzer, uh, craft kind of took a kick in the nuts. Well, not in, in, really. In, 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 mm, on the shelf. I on mean, the shelf. I don't, know that it's, shelf. I don't know that it's a direct... No. Well, uh, so shelf space, absolutely. Yeah, <clears throat> I, like, I don't know how much of that is the same. It is the same customer, though. Yeah, I'm just it, thinking it like because especially at my shelf, the area that was flexed was the craft mm -hmm. section, but they built a little more sec beer section at my place. But overall, you go to the main the, on the main beer aisle where you got all the macros. It's filled in with seltzer now. You got to go to a you got to go to a different chunk if you want. There's a craft aisle, now, yes. but if you're not, you're not getting the eyeballs on it because people always start at the macro. The macro is always that first aisle that you can get in in the drink section. It's designed for people to run down. That's why the big guys pay for that. That's the slotting fees for that chunk. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that was like, that's just one, um, like way to measure, like one measurement. And when you're talking about it being in a grocery store, like, there's a lot of breweries that are not in grocery stores and aren't going to be in grocery stores. Right. So you're talking about a much smaller, like, collection of them. Like, the ones that you're seeing, even that are the craft local ones, are still some of the biggest in the area. That you're seeing only those ones, and it's pretty rare that you see them come through unless they, and a lot of them that you do, they're probably getting some kind of deal with an AV InBev distributor or something along those lines. Like a, what's the one, the Columbia getting around here. Like mm -hmm. if you get in with Columbia distributing, then you're able to do it. But what I'm saying is like that going to the grocery store is still a much different measurement than just the people out in town saying seltzer took like, I don't know of many places where you're going to a restaurant and like, ordering a seltzer. And ordering a seltzer. Yeah. Like, that's that's just not there. You're, uh, I mean, you're getting them at some bars, right? Because you can just get the cans of stuff. Um, I've heard of a few that are putting them on tap. But, like, you're still, you're not getting seltzeries around. Mm, no, not yet. Like, yeah. You're not getting, uh, it's not replacing your, like, the breweries and the craft beer and doing it from that aspect. Yeah. And a lot of these seltzers that you're seeing that are new and popping up are being created by who craft breweries or big conglomerate breweries yeah, like say so ab is taking over most of the shelves but with the bud light seltzers. what's the big yeah. you know but the like biggest 90 percent of the sales are still coming from white claw and truly and truly is created by who uh, coors no boston beer company oh that no that's right uh, well they that but, flirts the line with craft. True, yes, but they still. I mean, <clears throat> I think we had an article or it's probably a somewhere. About it, but yeah, we got yeah for a uh, for today or a future time we may talk about it. But yeah. Uh, speaking of flirts the line with beer and things, uh, we do have a review to do today. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to get to whatever you're oh, yeah. over so here. Mine ties or... in almost better than that okay. when we talk about distribution. Is I've brought you guys oh. cans of my oh my goodness the favorite, legendary yeah favorite craft beer oh, wow uh, Boundary Bay Scotch Ale 
and I don't even know if they've signed any distribution contract. Probably not. And I think we, no, not at all. We, I think we interviewed them or did a review mm, on them. We've done reviews. Uh, I'm, on their intent to stay local. And yeah. He, like, the owner actively does not want to grow the company outside of a microbrewery. Right. Uh, and I don't remember whether it was like tax reasons or just stay local and stand in control of it. So it's impossible. Yeah. If, if you can find it out there, Boundary Bay, Scotch Ale, any of the Boundary Bay beers, but I have not seen it anywhere out of Pacific Northwest. This I found in uh, Puyallup. So. Wow, that's pretty, far, that's pretty south. <laughs> it's pretty that's far pretty south. south for this. It used to be a handful of years ago. It used to be. Outside of Bellingham, Whatcom County, you couldn't find it. So, yeah. Uh, well, and I, uh, two points. One, I got found some thing about distribution, but number one, I think also that's one of my like I, I feel bad to say this, but favorite things about the pandemic is the increase in distribution of beers mm-hmm. and people who like were never canning or distributing anything that now have like. You can find it way more often or availability. Well, I wonder how much of it, though, is the sustainability. Because Boundary Bay, been around forever. Uh, I found this beer in 2003, 2004. Not the ones we're drinking right now, right? No, no, no. Not this. <laughs> but that's when I found this beer. And it's been the same uh, since then. But within Bellingham alone, there's been... I mean, that they had a huge craft brewery boom. Yeah. And a large percentage of those have now... Gone out of business. Mm, I would disagree. With Melvin, that. Melvin wasn't originally from here, and they're still what? in business. Yeah, they're from Wyoming. Oh, they just shut down. They're the from Bellingham. Wyoming. Yeah, because of like COVID and everything. No, like blatant sexual harassment oh. and oh. like well, like, yeah, good, well, terrible good. management tactics. Good. Yeah, good, good, good riddance. <laughs> uh, but I feel like going up there pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, uh, a lot fewer breweries yeah the one the ones that had the uh more years in operation a healthier cash flow they were able to uh get past all the roadblocks that were thrown into that type of business where you you were dependent on people coming in every single day buying yeah. beer and it was gosh we had like 30 days we were, we were shut down yeah. Uh, yep. But before a business like that, where you have to sell, you have fresh beer. You have to sell. Well, let's let's call it a week. I have to sell all this beer I just made every week. That's four turns of right. of inventory that you just missed out on. And there's not a lot of places if you're new and upcoming, or you were on a shoestring budget. What well, margins are razor thin in that industry too. So, well, the. The upside, if I remember correctly, you're, the, what you're making the most from is if you have that tap room. Mm-hmm. Because you're just pushing your own stuff out the door. The um, Like, I was at Camp Colvos in Tacoma the other day, and I just was like, oh, I'm going to buy one of their six-packs, not realizing it's like a more expensive six-pack than most that I just go to the grocery store. Grocery mm-hmm. store, you're looking at like, eh, you're lucky now if you get one under 10. Right. But you're getting like 11, 12, and this one was like... 14, 15, but in going back to Bellingham and that, like they are opening tap rooms and there are like, like there's a brand new one opening, um, in a couple of weeks or was supposed to be El Suenito or Suenito. Um, so I think that like there are some, when you look at big picture breweries that were closing due to pandemic and stuff, but I think it was last year that actually, uh, openings outpaced closings again. Oh, really? Then, nice. like, yeah, a couple years, but it actually kind of switched and has made it to that place. And Bellingham is one of those fascinating things, like that they. It is not a large city, but mm-hmm. they do sustain a lot of um, breweries, and there are mm-hmm. still like, I mean, I could sit and list probably ten at least. I think that are still. Like college town, it, I, I wonder about that because it's, it's, it's kind of like it, kind of like Ellensburg and Iron Horse, um, similar. But I think Iron Horse 
has the opposite goals yes. for their business than, than a Boundary, boundary Bay. Bay. I would agree. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, Iron Horse definitely more uh, distribution uh, focused. Because they've consolidated. They were trying to expand to a bigger tap room. And it didn't work out. A and they're, down, ba- right? they're back at the um, distribution center, just like old offices turned into. Right. Which I think... You I guys didn't there. go. I went to the to the distribution center with the tap room. I went there before they opened. The, so, although it's like way back in the yeah. day. I've been to the the reopened um, last year on the way to Eastern Washington. Yeah. On the way, all the way back, one of them. I don't know. I forgot how good this was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, no, it, it is like dark beer season, so we are getting into like. Yeah, we just had our first rain of the fall. This feels very <laughs> appropriate. Because um, the scotch is not a... Is it a year-round yep. offering? Yeah. Yep. But this is... Uh, not two weeks ago when it was still 80 degrees in October. I would not be cracking this. No. no right. No. no. I wouldn't have been looking for it either. So I'd be sitting in, fr- <clears throat> yeah, sitting in front of a fan, sweaty and miserable. Well, and it's interesting. Just cracking this, no way. But like right now... The, yeah. rain, the rain has settled in. You can feel it in your bones because we're old now. This is hits. The, uh, so good. They've gone back and forth with the Scotch Ale because I think for a while it was Scotch style ale, and now the can just says Scotch Ale. But I mean, there, well, there's been a few different things because I've run into this before when ordering that there is Scotch Ale, mm-hmm. there is Scottish Ale. And then there's like I think another like a Scotch style or something. Right. Um, I have found the Scotch ale is more my preferred. It's to me a more like um, solid flavor. It's more uh, robust. Like there's a kind of a fuller mouthfeel to it compared to the Scottish um, style, which is kind of almost more like a, think of like an Irish stout compared compared to like an American stout. Like an Irish stout feels like um, a less boozy, less like um, it's thicker, more easy. fuller. Yeah. yeah. Like so, even though Guinness pours real dark, it is a much lighter like it is, body it is feel, super thinner mouth. Super, yeah. yeah. So that feels thin. That's kind of what I found is the difference is like the Scotch ale to me gives like a really good solid like punch yeah. of flavor, and the Scottish is like a more like tempered version. Mm-hmm. Um, because we also have a beer to taste. To, a beer to taste that will actually. Do we want to segue review. into that yet? We've been dreading this for about two weeks. Now. I know, but it, for an American Beer Review podcast, we do actually have to review re- a beer. Review a beer, not just sit around and drink our favorites and <laughs> right. Yeah. So. so, who found this one? Was this no, Thor found? No, 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 Brian. I know Brian bought it, but somebody I, found it. I and, found it and sent the text message. So I was at um. Kind of the big box beer store. I think I was buying like cases of beer for my sister's birthday party and came across and was like, what is this? Right. So uh, we have. For you today. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I seriously, like, I don't know what to expect from this. Um, Did anybody. So we had a half pod two weeks ago, and it got poured, didn't no, it? No, it didn't. We didn't open it. We didn't oh, open okay. It. We didn't open it. I did not go on the internet to read anything no. about okay. it. We're, we are going so in is, blind. this is All right. live sampling yeah. of... So, this is a Twisted Pretzel. It is a Belgian-style wheat ale brewed with spices and caramel malt from Shock Top. So, you're... Uh, your micro macro brew. Yeah, you're like mm-hmm. yes, which is ba- a great way. It's to It's baseball it. beer because like, that's yep. primarily what you got dra- on draft. It um, also was one that is like uh, it's a gateway beer. Gateway beer, I like the traditional shock top, not this. There's, yes, there's yes. no way this yeah. is. <laughs> no, yeah, the normal. traditional shock top is yeah. like your. Um, it's it's more fruity. It's like um, it's in general, with, it's served with orange. Yeah, it's which. Just, Throwback to one of our earlier, don't fruit my beer. I don't, like, I don't know that anybody besides Shop Top gets served with fruit anymore. 
Uh, if Widmer Half would still be with a. When's the last time you saw Widmer Half on tap? Right. Mm, airport. Well, yeah, it's a way airport. Back uh, dare we say that Hef, that Widmer Half has become airport beer now? Because yeah, literally, I have only ever seen it at airport in the last. Oh, you're handful of years. Probably also flying out of SeaTac, where it's probably like a yeah. Widmer yeah. restaurant. Yeah. Like. yeah. Yeah, because it was in SeaTac, not in uh, San Francisco. Yeah. No. All right, so. Well, you might as well just crack yeah. it. So I bought a couple quit bottles. Staring at it. Somebody wants to help me out here as we oh, pass around some glasses or get ourselves situated here. All right. We've. We've got our sampling snifters. Yeah. AKA stemless wine glasses. Uh, I'll hold you pour and then I'll pass. Yeah, that sounds. All right, so. That's probably. Yeah, oh boy, that's, look at that. I, I bought, so I couldn't decide. So they, I originally saw it in a six pack and was like, nope. Not buying that. Do not need a whole sixer. Yeah. So Everybody went, give this a smell and so tell went, me what this is before we go any further. Oh, no. Oh, God. Is this going to be Bud Light Seltzer Holiday Pack all over again? I'm getting those vibes. Oh, not going to lie. Right? Wow. Okay. So That is that is like opening a bag of pretzels. Yeah. So they got the aroma I'm, down. Well, I'm getting... I'm also getting like buttered popcorn out of a microwave. So that's a... So uh, there are some beers that I could see that, and especially with this being pretzel beer, I could see that. Generally, if you're getting that, the beer was not like finished fermenting, and it has diacetyl in it. If you're getting that, which is not great, but which you would expect that, out of like a craft brewery or something, but out of something like a shock top, it's yeah. gonna be. Yeah, it definitely it's very bready in the smell. Um, comes out like dark. Uh, kind of like. like a, Kind of like a... Not like a stout, but like a... Red ale? Well, yeah. or, or between, dare, between, dare I say a scotch? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like a pretzel? Okay. I mean, it's just... That's not awful. No, but it's just like malt. It's just like... That somehow they got like the salt <laughs> flavor in there at the tail end. Where did that like the, su- go? the salt on the pretzel, like yeah. the, fi- the finish is almost like there's yeah. a little bit of saltiness to it. They nailed what they were going for. I just okay, so God, it is a pretzel, but this is the thing. But so I don't. It's not a good pretzel. That's the problem. Uh, should we so have had pretzels to try with this? Ooh, so you know what it is with a little bit of bigger swing. It's not like a mini pretzel twist. This is like a. Costco, like a giant, giant pretzel, ready, like, like the, the soft, gooey, the soft yeah. pretzel. That's the flavor that it's got. Yeah, this is. Yeah, no, you nailed it. It's not a crunchy pretzel. <clears throat> I mean, I'm never. Oh, what, I'm kind of craving a pretzel right cool. now. <laughs> I've got but, peanut butter filled pretzels from Costco over there. <laughs> I don't know that I'm gonna try this again. Um, although, it, dare I, I say, does it feel buttery? Does it feel like a buttery pretzel? But the smell, that's where I was going with the soft pretzel. Yeah, a soft, that somebody just put some butter it's on, like that's why butter, it smells like Butter, a little popcorn. bit of the salt. Got the, so that's what microwave popcorn smells like, butter and salt. I think everything boils down to, if you put butter and salt on it, it tastes good. Um, no, but my lips generally feel like there's a layer of salt. butter on it. I think this is a throwback to our Klaus Haller review. Going, do I do I have to finish it? Uh, I think this is better. It's better, um, better than that, and there is booze in it, so there is a yeah an upside. Yeah. But I just I keep going back to like there was a lot of these like there's a lot of them sitting there, stacks of them, which probably doesn't say good things about sales. So to me, like this is definitely like a. It feels like a. They're trying to mess with like a Oktoberfest or like doing that kind of like it's their weird 
themed version of it. Mm-hmm. But I just wonder, like, what's your long term plan for this? Do you think that Shock Top Pretzel is going to be a big seller? Do you think that oh. it's going to be? No, it's a, a we're, we're never. Like, in, it's a novelty seasonal item, absolutely. But do you think then it becomes an annual thing, like, or is it just like someone's like, hey, I think we can make this, so let's just do it. I think it falls into the like the Jones sodas Thanksgiving variety pack where do you really want a turkey and gravy soda no but are you gonna buy it one time just to see what it tastes like yeah and they brought that back for year after year because it's kind of just a thing yeah Yeah. i don't think you'll see a big stack of it if you see it again in the future but this might be like one of those weird food items like uh, it dis like it disappears off your shelf and then you see like on the discovery channel in five years some weird foods dot documentary there's like one city in America where they now buy uh, 10 times as much as they sold <laughs> nationwide just right. in this one little city. Like there's some city they're drinking 10 gallons of this a, a year. There are some random beer review podcast <laughs> picks it up <laughs> to taste it. Listen, we ourselves are not enough to keep a We're company not- in business. <clears throat> you wouldn't pull the trigger on a full six pack. And there's an- another bottle there, which you can take home. I Because... Yeah. <laughs> We don't need to open the second one. I'm going to take it somewhere. This beer review podcast is not below drinking any beer. Ooh. Once. Okay. Once. Okay. Okay. I was like trying to think if there was something that I would just not. No, because I had the horrible banana half. I I physically had to. T- I physically tasted it. Somebody did a jalapeno beer at one point too, right? Yeah, up up the road, up 410. Oh. Like uh, tasted it. I, no, I. Yeah, we went there in person. If it was that same one, yeah, it, I went to Elkhead up in Buckley. Yeah, and that was wa- that was you and me. And I think we took we didn't have uh, we had somebody else. Was did we? I think we had a, a buddy of mine. Yeah, because yeah. I bought his beer, like, and just was like, "Here, you can have this." Like, I'm getting something else. I just blindly ordered. And Ooh. God, I can't remember the name. It's just names, right? Like just up on the wall. And so it's just like, oh, I'll take that name. And looking back, like it was probably something like hot lava or something that I was like, oh yeah, cool. No, I'll take I think that. it was literally just pepper beer because I ordered one too. Yeah, it was bad. It was uh, it, not bad. It was different. I should, I should it say it was different. Yeah, it's not. It wasn't bad. It's not my like preferred. Like right. I don't want. Um, Spicy beer. A beer to be making me sweat. <laughs> right. Yeah. It it wasn't bad in the sense that they said this is a spicy pepper beer. It was a spicy pepper beer in the same vein as, yes, this tastes like a soft pretzel. Oh, they nailed. They nailed they what na- I was going it, for. Didn't it, we say it's, it's, if we were, if I was grading on the no, fact that it. this is this mm-hmm. a beer that tastes like pretzel, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I never want this again. <laughs> no, right? No. Like, I don't feel... Well, we just, like, lost, we just lost potential sponsorship from Shock Top. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know that that was oh. on the table in the first place. I, I, was, I was just going to say, I, we were talking about Widmer earlier, and I would have said the same thing about Shock Top, but my sister literally ordered a Shock Top yesterday when we were out. Um, she did not put the orange in. Or maybe this is a challenge to Shock Top to C- convince sort us. this out. Yeah, so figure this out. I th- the, I, the I like the idea because you go to a bar, watch a football game. It's beer and pretzels, beer and pretzels. But I don't. I, want I feel like this could work, but you got to make it work. It's got to be a lager base because it is. I want a little bit lighter. I want. You no. Know, yeah. Uh, I want Bud Light and a bowl of pretzels to watch the game. I could see like a dark lager with like a little bit of that. So like the bo- take a little bit of the body yeah. out. Like I want it to taste like beer and a pretzel, not a pretzel. This uh, it will not find a rotation for me, but this could almost serve the uh, similar during the summer as like a gosa or a sour beer, where yeah, it does I, have it's, that. It's not my it's, it's not my favorite that. thing, right? Yeah. But I enjoy the flavor, especially it grew on me a little bit. The the gosas. Oh, uh, the ghosts. I was like, you still have pretzel beer. Then. No, 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 no. <laughs> but I like them because when you're working in the yard, mm-hmm. you're whatever, yeah, I'm going to sip on this beer and I'm going to finish these 12 ounces over an hour and a half. Yeah. Uh, two hour and it kind of fills there's, that. There's zero chance a beer that you are in control of lasts an hour and a half. 
Is it Gosa? An hour and a half? If, if 30 the, minutes? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if the beer is drinkable, warm, enjoyable, warm, well, there's the really salt, no shelf life. Yeah, it's salty. Yeah. Uh, uh, that, yeah. Uh, it's different. I'm not going to chug it. There's no way I'm going to shotgun it. But kind of an outside doing something beer. This could maybe fill that niche. So, regular I, rotation in the kitchen fridge. Oh, no. absolutely not. No. Uh, garage fridge? No. No. No, you, if you bought a six pack, Even you would have this for the next two years. Okay. Yeah, handing it out to people. Yeah, there we go. It's it's a it's a novelty beer. Like that's the the only way that it fits. Um, Which getting back to it is, I think how seltzers ended up getting so big in the first place and taking over uh, yeah. that many shelves is how many of those, especially the Bud Light seltzers, were bought. We did one last year with the holiday pack. Uh, they've got the retro tie dye packs, the cola packs. How much of it is people just buying it? Going, yeah. This seems weird. Yeah, I'm just gonna try it. Well, the uh, truly recently is stating that they are like tamping down the flavors of stuff. Like, so they just went to this like yeah more flavors and now we're like coming back down like we're like yeah, because maybe it, not quite I'm not going to lie I was an early adopter mm-hmm. because white claw felt like to me originally started out it was literally slightly flavored alcoholic water water that was adjacent it to, was, to it, another flavor yeah it was like uh what's the one sparkling water company they say they just the the lime farts on the on the water. Oh, uh, LaCroix. But, yeah, like, oh, LaCroix. essenced. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's the essence. essence water. Like, it felt like they, it was the essence of it, and it was, it, it's like a, it was like a vodka tonic almost, mm. like, before they started making actual vodka tonic cocktails. Yeah. But I don't want that. I, like, I want, if I could sip this at 5% on right. a summer day, perfect. And then, COVID happened. Right. People started boozing it up. Uh, White Claw summer happened. And uh, everybody dumped in, and like what you said, the fla- they just turned the flavors into like it was like drinking Kool Aid at some point. Like yep. some of these things, Kool Aid with that harsh chemical chemically yeah. because it's off of corn sugar that the original White Claws I didn't feel like ha- had mm. until all the fl- all the flavor like Flavor Town showed up, and it was just like. I was kind of over it at that point. So coming out of this summer, so I bet big on it. <clears throat> Some of my stores thought it was going to be the next uh, seltzer craze thing was the uh, alcohol frozen popsicles. Oh, yeah. The alcohol Yikes. daughter pops. Yeah. I, th- I thought those were going to go insane. Loaded up on them. Uh, I yeah, thought, I yeah. think I I texted everybody a photo. I saw it, like a pile of them, and I brought I, like, oh, I brought them in heavy, and I'm still sitting on all of them. Oh jeez. Uh, and it's sorry about that. The <laughs> it's all right, but the margin was fine on it. Margin was great. It, and yeah. I thought that was just going to be the next thing, and then you brought them uh, to the damn house yeah. uh, for vacation. And then we started doing the math, and you're going, well, it's, a, what, 3% alcohol? Yeah, at they, two, some of them are boozier than are that. Like four and a half? They, you bought, I, you, I think you'd have to... It was like... Pack this, I bought a 12-pack, and like a 12-pack was one... Uh, light beer. One light beer. Yeah. Because of the ounces, basically. Like, it's what it you're looking like, at. It was, like, it's like, it was like two ounces yeah. you're getting, per thing. Yeah, you're getting like a... Like, I've seen them anywhere between 5 and 8%. Okay. But you're still only getting what? I think they're when they're I when they're, they're liquid, three to four ounces. Yeah, I don't even think they're that high. Yeah. yeah. The issue, but the issue is because alcohol doesn't freeze, and they have to put some really weird shit in there. Uh, yeah. As soon as you crack it, and we're we're at the damn house, it's you know. 80, Not, pushing 90. 90. Yeah. Oh, this last time. And yeah. the second you pushing. Yeah. Oh, way harder than that. Yeah. yeah. And the but the second you uh, crack that thing open, hot outside, 
all that alcohol and whatever binder they use just, just sitting at the bottom. slips off the ice. Yeah. So you're having to like take a little sip of the syrup. Yeah. And take a little nib of ice, but so you're just chewing ice with boozy ice. Right. It yeah. wasn't like a maybe they could, they'll probably figure it out because if well, it, based if, on if, sales, they're not going to spend a whole lot of money figuring it out. You never know. I eh. mean, it, we, we, it's kind of funny because you know we're we're pushing our twentieth year reunion, and now all of a sudden media and the world in general is starting to pull up like, hey, kids, you remember you watched all that on Nickelodeon? Stuff stuff like that. Like, retro things are coming back. Uh, they're selling the Kool-Aid water additives. This All this stuff. Advertisers are going, we need to start hitting these people in their 30s and 40s with mm-hmm. nostalgia. Now that we finally feel, started earning a yeah. livable wage. Yeah. Well, some of us. Uh but I feel like they'll give it one more try. I think they'll try next summer. I Come back to the drawing board. If they if they can somebody the first person to partner with Otter Pops Oof. to get boozy Otter Pops wins that race, and I think that could be the next seltzer craze. Just like hearkening back to the original run, uh, just like we thought Craft Lager was going to be the next phase, but I it was actually was seltzer it. all yeah. along. Uh, I was listening to, I think it was the Brewbound podcast, and they had Brewbound or some other, but they had a brewer on, and he was like, I still keep thinking it's going to be the year of the lager. And I felt very, like, justified for you, Mm -hmm. because you've been saying it for, like, six years now. (laughs) Right. Um, That he was like, it was was him or one of the, um, the other authors for Brewbound that were just like, yeah, like, I keep thinking this is going to be... Um, this return, and I think instead, what happened that would have been the year of the logger was like the switch to like locale and NA beer stuff. Mm-hmm. So, which we can save that conversation for another day. Which is what I thought the logger had a head in. Yeah, was that it was the lower calorie, mm-hmm. whatever lighter option, uh, especially for summer. So I am noticing. We did not grade it. We didn't actually come up with the grade on the pretzel beer, but oh no, I thought Thor had a good idea. It's like what fridge is this going to be in? Yeah, all all three of us have finished. We did, but oh, I also I mean, that's like four ounces. A piece. Yeah, but yeah, it's not terrible enough that we are setting it to the side. Yeah. Uh, if it's at a, um, I like Thor's idea. Like it's it's not in my main fridge. It's not in my garage fridge. It's a novelty beer. Like maybe I'll bring a six pack on vacation with a bunch of people to be like, ha ha, check this out. Not with you guys anymore. Is um, it a white elephant gift? Ooh. Ooh. It fits well there. That's a great so idea. You throw back to the old uh, every other weekend meetup days. Oh, where yeah. Where we would just order the restaurant we met at had mm-hmm. uh, beers just numbered one through, I think, like 20 or 25. Yeah. And people coming in late would just text a random number because yes. it, it rotated every every couple weeks. Uh, and so you just get a random beer. If this is the random beer that you got, I'm not part. Okay, that's what I was gonna say. I yeah, no the shot. way the way I was thinking of it is I'm ha- I'm, I'm halfway tempted to return it. Uh, <laughs> I will pay for it, but I don't just, want just it. Give, give, give me, me a different, different number. I was thinking of it as like going to um, a craft brewery, and I will put it into my taster, like my my sample. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. like. If I see like okay, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get that IPA. I'm gonna grab that stout. Right. Like okay, I'll take one of your lagers. Like give me the amber. Throw this one of the like, end. I just you want... know what? Give me the weird one. Yeah, an ounce and a half, two yeah. ounces of yeah. this is like about what I need. I I do, not... and there's some that I've had that are like I think these are really great beers. This you can tell the work that's going into it. You're like I don't need 16 ounces of this. Right. This like oh no, I'm not ordering a big boy of this. I feel completely. I'm good just with that yeah. like even finishing the I feel like finishing the bottle would have been like on my own oh yeah would have been would have been some a work. task a yeah. little bit of a task what's the uh, what's the percentage on that five I, I went back to double check what if they up the grain bill and that was like a seven and a half to eight kind of a um, do, do you want a barrel aged pretzel beer is that what you're asking oof. 
But would that extra kick, maybe a little extra hops, no. offset mm. that buttery taste? Because that's all. Because it, it's so, so it's it, almost to like a burnt caramel. It would, but I don't think that's what they're going. It wouldn't. No. It wouldn't. It wouldn't have the broad appeal. Because no. it it tastes like yeah. having a large pretzel. Like I yeah. said, that salt yeah. finish. So if they, it, but if they up the hooch, made it more of a. You can make it taste winter better, better, but without the salt. If they got rid of the salt, it's a sodium-free pretzel. That's what I'm saying. You can make it taste better, but it yeah. doesn't hit what they're going for. Yeah. And they could just make an entirely different beer. Yeah. Yeah, so not a resounding endorsement for that one. They, they got finished. And if you, it's unique. At the it's end of the day, if you want to give it a try, if it sounds interesting. Oh, it's interesting. If you can pick up a bottle or two. Yeah. Yeah, I... Go go to where you can get a bottle, not a six pack. Right? Yeah. Optimal. Optimal. Yeah. Alright. I think that's about a pod, right, guys? Yeah. I think we uh pretzel beer did us in. It's a, it's a nice uh re entry <laughs> after our little hiatus. Stretch your legs a little bit so we don't pull a hammy or something. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. Alright. So cool. Uh we'll check you out in a week or so. Let's get out of here. If you're picking up what we're putting down. Leave us a review on whatever podcast service you use and throw us a follow on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. LinkedIn? off random things. Oh, this is going to be the outro. Yeah. You're Fuck. trying to write. Uh, Me, Chad, yeah, and I are this is, wrapping it up. This is the creative okay. process. Uh, yeah. Follow, follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, <laughs> join our OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> we should have an OnlyFans and we only post beer pictures. Pictures of beer on cans. They, uncanned beer. <laughs> <laughs> topless beer. It's, we, it's we, an open beer. It's all topless we, beers. We have, we have topless beers. God, that could fund the whole podcast. <laughs> Write it Point down. Tap. Write it down.